Exactly. Who is this this man who's a good friend of Steven Spielberg's? I'm sure we all know his music. Of course, John Williams. Anyone who's ever hummed the Indiana Jones theme or the Star Wars theme knows <laughs> his music if they don't know his name. And a lot of people do know his name, which makes him rare among film composers. And take off, take off a few of his biggest m movies in addition to those. I mean, it's almost like a, I mean, he's done every Steven Spielberg feature film, which is saying right. a lot. Schindler's List, uh, of course, George Lucas, all the Star Wars films he's done, Indiana Jones. Uh, he did the first Harry Potter film, so a lot of kids, even young kids, still know his music. He's very, you know, he's uh, every big movie he's doing um, in a long line. He's been there, and we're about to hear a lot more of his music with uh, two Spielberg film films coming out within days of each other. Uh, the Adventures of Tintin and, of course, War Horse War coming Horse. out within a few days of each other. So two very different scores, all John Williams uh, front to back. He is an unusual man and that the way he composes, really there are not many people who get to do it like he does. Give us a little feel for how he makes his music, what the process is. Does he watch the movie? How, how does he do it? Well, I think the most interesting thing about it is the fact that he does do it a way that no one does it anymore, as far as I could tell, which is putting pencil onto paper and writing notes. Huh. Um, he doesn't start until he sees the film. Um, he gets, it's, it's hard for him to talk about where the ideas come, but he sort of thinks in almost a painterly way about, about his music. Um, but then he works works with a stopwatch, an analog stopwatch, and his pencil and paper and a piano. And in a world where everything is computers and keyboards and software, uh, he's a season anomaly for sure. Does he actually watch the movie, John, uh, full, or does he and listen to the dialogue, or does he just just look at images, or? Uh, every, well, he lists, he gets a series of rough cuts, and they okay. they look at the rough cuts and decide where the music will be at first, and then he goes to town from scene to scene, working mostly through memory. He watches the scene, goes into his office, works from memory of the scene, and writes to it. Uh, so it's a really it's a very kind of savant way that he has of doing things. I think for hard for anyone to really comprehend until they you know see the films and see how the music has been matched to it. The world is changing around him mm. though. Digital technology, younger composers, younger types, ways of producing music, um, outsourcing overseas. Yeah. How's that shaking up the business? Uh, he lives in this very privileged bubble is the way he put it to me um, where he gets to do what he does in front of a hundred piece orchestra uh, which is extremely rare in the business right, right. now. Um, young composers have to do with synthesized scores or they uh, they will conduct an orchestra in Seattle or even Prague over a phone line so they can pay non-union wages to get these guys to, to create a, an orchestral score. Um, of course, you have a lot of rock stars and electronica stars coming into music. If you look at um, Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, that's Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. So there's a lot of different styles being heard in music now. And so the orchestral score, I think, will always be there, but the way it's being produced Produced, it has to be cheap and fast and efficient for studios to support it at all. And the score is just so important. I mean, we think of these movies, if we watch them without the music, you might not think it, but what would Jaws be without its music? What That's would Star right. I mean, it's just so imprinted on our brains. Very quickly, Steven Spielberg trusts him to the point where he doesn't even have him do a demo for him anymore. He just, what does he do? He plays for him on the piano? It's, it's remarkable. He, uh, Williams comes up with these ideas on the sketches. He plays them for Steven Spielberg on the piano in his office doesn't record anything, and the next time Spielberg hears them is when a full orchestra is playing them. So he doesn't uh, go step by step and approve and, and say no, change this or that. He almost completely defers to John Williams uh, on the musical uh, notation. So he's a real partner with him in the filmmaking process. It's an amazing story. You spent a lot of time watching him, talking to him. Great story by you. It's in the Friday Journal. Thanks for sharing a little sure, bit of it with pleasure. us here Thanks. on Lunch Break. Okay.